Good morning. Welcome to day 35 of our study. We're going to be in 2 Peter today, 2 Peter chapter 1. We're going to be looking at verses 19 through 21 today. And there's a, a wonderful uh, doctrine of Scripture that uh, is, is uh, referred to in these verses. It's the, the inspiration of Scripture. And when we talk about inspiration, we're not talking about how, how the world views inspiration. It's not this idea for creativity. It's not something that is generated in the, the heart and mind of, of a person. Inspiration is uh, what Timothy refers to it as being God-breathed. It's something that God, uh, God's word, his, his actual uh, words come through the, the writings of the scripture writers. And we're going to see kind of how that works out today because Peter kind of lets us in on the process. I mean, if anybody's going to let us in on the process of inspiration, it's got to be somebody who's actually uh, been used by God to write inspired scripture. And Peter is one of those individuals. Starting at verse 19, it says, And so we have this uh, have the pro uh, prophetic word confirmed. And we went back into yesterday where Peter was uh, dealing with um, false teachers and he was talking about how his authority was superior to that of the false teachers because he had the experience of seeing Jesus in all his glory right in front of him. And, and Peter relayed that. Peter is relaying that truth to us. But he says, he says that, that truth, you have it confirmed. And that confirmation doesn't come necessarily just from Peter's word or his virtue. It comes by the fact that even though his account, give, we should lend it greater authority than the false teacher, it pales in comparison to the authority as, of God. It pales in comparison to the greatness and, and just the, the nuance of what God can tell us, the truth of what God gives us. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you would do well to heed as a, as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star arises in your hearts. We would do well to heed it. Peter's saying, your best bet don't just listen to me, even though, even though I have the authority that has been given by God. I've, I've had the opportunity to, to be with the Savior. I've had the opportunity, and I've been given the blessing of being able to see miraculous things. Above all of that, don't just take heed to my word, but take heed to God's word. Listen and obey God's word. And we do that. For how long? How, how long is that, is that necessary? Well, first of all, we live in a very dark world. And until Christ returns, we are to be the light that shines in a dark place. And the only way that we are going to be the light is if we reflect the light. You know, the wonderful thing, you know, it's, it's, really, it's really a great analogy as you think of a, of a candle. Can you have fire without a candle. Well, absolutely. You can totally have fire without a candle. But what does a candle do in a house? It makes that fire useful. It, it, it gives it a purpose and, and an ability to, to uh, light dark places without destroying. But if you just have the candle, what does the candle do? Well, the candle's no good for anything without the fire. We are to shine as a light in a dark place. We have God's word until he returns. And we need to be using it and living it. We need to take that as our absolute authority. If we are to say that we are going to live in any particular way, that we are going to do it according to the word of God. Because that is what we truly follow. That is the light that gives this candle a purpose. 
the truth of God's word. The truth of God's word points us in one, one place and one place only. Jesus Christ. He is the light. He is the light we are to display and reflect to a dark world. Knowing this first, verse 20, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. I think this is really important for us as, as believers because I, I've been in a number of Bible studies and I've heard a number of teach, Bible teachers or, or pastors and there is one phrase that it, it rubs me like sandpaper. It drives me nuts. It, I would, I would more, more readily take an orbital sander to my head than to, to engage in somebody who says this all the time. But uh, you go into a Bible study and they read a passage of scripture and this phrase just drives me nuts. They go around the room and they say, what does it mean to you? And that is such a wrong way of looking at scripture. It's never, what does it mean to me? It's never, it, what is my truth that I pull out of scripture? No, 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 no. Scripture is true. Scripture is the absolute. There is nothing that I am going to pull out and say, this is the truth for me, and it's not the same truth for somebody else. See, I can't say that Scripture has a meaning for me and a different meaning for somebody else. Scripture says what God intends it to say, and all of its meaning is God's meaning. What God meant it to say is what it means. Not what I want it to mean. Not what I think it means. Not what it means to me at this particular time in my life. What God meant it to say is what it means. The application can be very different. But the meaning is always God's meaning. And nothing more. Verse 21, for prophecy never came by the will of man. Again, it never, it, God's word, God's, God's revelation never came because that was what a, some person wanted. I don't reveal things to you because this is what I want you to know and I, I want you to have and, and, and this is all about me and, and what I'm bringing to you. No. It doesn't come by the will of man. But it says, but holy men of God, not perfect men, but men that were set apart by God. Holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Inspiration of, of Scripture. God giving the Bible the meaning he wants it to have was done in a way where there was the work of the Holy Spirit involved in the lives of these few people. There are very few people in the, in the whole of Scripture, from Genesis to Revelation, there are very few people that have been under this, this process of inspiration. And there will not be any more. We, we have all that we need. They spoke, they wrote God's word as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. See, God himself moved these men to write these words and nothing else. Peter, Paul, John, Moses, uh, David, Solomon, they're not giving you their opinions in Scripture. They're not giving you uh, the 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 it's basically the sum of, of what they think to be right. They are giving you God's truth. God used those men to accomplish his purposes so that you and I can have his word. We can have an absolute truth. It's an amazing process. It's one that uh, we really can't fully understand because... I mean, we're, we're, we're listening right here to a man who has been through it. And this is about as close as you're going to come to understanding the process because God only worked the, the office of inspiration through these men. 
Nobody here is going to be inspired to write scripture again by God and actually do it and, and we're going to add it to, to the Bible. We don't need to. We have everything we need for life and godliness. It's done. So it's really hard for us to put ourselves in shoes that we'll never wear. That we can never wear. You know, we, we're never going to have the opportunity to. But it is an amazing process and something for us to, to meditate on, on, on how God personally related his word to you and me. God wanted you to have his truth. He wanted you to be sure of it, that it came directly from him. I love how Timothy puts it. He puts it as, you know, the inspiration, the words that he used really literally means God breathed, like it came straight from his mouth. Yes, it takes the form and, and personality of the person who writes it, but yet God moved these men to write his word. What an amazing thing that you and I can be sure that what we're reading comes directly from God. I hope that you meditate on that today, and I hope you have a good time doing it, and I just hope that you appreciate what the Lord went through, not just in the sacrifice of his son and, and salvation, but He what he went through to maintain a relationship with he wants that relationship with you. He wants that communication. And he used this process so that you can hear his words. What an amazing truth. I'll see you next time.